Welcome everybody to the Sabbath Day Conference Call. This is Barbara. I'm serving as your host today. And today we're having a round table of everybody that's been here at the Spring Feast. James is going to start out uh, and uh, okay, all right. You got a best feeling right there. Well, I'll just talk a little bit first about, about this week. Um, I know my, my wife and I for pretty much uh, for the last year we've had very little fellowship, if any, and other than, you know, feast times and just coming here and being around, you know, about 20 other people that, you know, love Yah, you know, love Yeshua and want to obey his commandments. And just the conversation has been just very uplifting. I think everyone who's been here is going to be leaving. Just there, you know, we just, we've been uplifted and until, um, it's going to continue us on until next feast. And I'm so blessed to have met everyone, getting to know Barbara. I've always heard her voice on the conference call. She's actually sweeter in person than, <laughs> even though she's so sweet online, but uh, she's very hospitable. And we're just really grateful we took the trek out here from, from Texas. And um, all the wonderful teachings we've had, um, just we've learned so much. And that just brings us closer to Elohim, to you know keep his statutes and, um, you know, it's, reminded me so much about how I need to improve in my walk in my life and not worry so much about what other people are doing in their lives uh, close to me or far from me. Um, I need, there's so much I need to work on and with myself. And so that's been this week. And, you know, uh, it's been so simple, you know, every night um, we just go by the campfire after, you know, a day of teachings and good food and it's simple. That's, I think, how Yah designed it, you know, um, entertaining. It's just we don't need to go on TV and all the other things that we do to pass time. The, the campfires and just us talking is, has been the absolute best. Um, and, all, and all of it, you know, even just the mornings uh, together. Um, uh, I, I don't know. There hasn't really been a down point. In, in this feast time, we got to go to the beach one time, and that was that was very nice too. So, um, as far as like how I came to, to Lunar Sabbath, did you want to talk? To yeah. How did you find out about the Lunar Sabbath, and how did yeah. that happen? Uh, I've heard about it before, and I've always questioned it um, at first because I uh, I wasn't sure. You know, with like the Fourth Commandment, you know, I was thinking the seven-day continuous cycle based off of that. And that was like my stumbling block and then also some people that had told me about the lunar sabbath also said that, that 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 scripture was changed and that never sat right with me trying to change scripture to fit your doctrine but i found that you don't have to change the scriptures at all it says they're perfectly it's actually it's, it's testing your heart to see if you really want to be obedient or not that's why the scriptures is written the way that it's written which makes it more beautiful because it's not just so plain clear cut it's written because Yah, you know, so, uh, Jacob, one of the teachers here today, he said, you know, what, what does Yah ultimately want? He wants a family. So how does he, you know, his family are people that love him and seek after him. And so that's why his word is the way it is to, to test the fruit of each of us to see if we're really for him or not. So it was about a year ago. Um, I was just doing a study on the year calendar I, was, I heard you know the 364 day year the 365 i was like how did it change and i never even heard 360 before but i came across this article it might have been by troy miller is that name ring a bell yeah yeah does. okay i think i came across his website and he was talking about it and <laughs> i was sitting as a, as a sabbath a saturday sabbath i was sitting on my couch and i was reading it and then i said to my wife um well, I can't. Yeah, I think it's from him. I, I, I said to my wife, I was like, I think we're doing the Sabbath wrong. I think it is the lunar Sabbath. And she's like, really? And she, you know, like, she wasn't opposed to me. And it was great because we actually were just like, she was really open and we were doing a study together. And by the end of it, we we're like, I think it was a Saturday. It was like, I think we have to do another Sabbath because it's on Monday now. You know, like, or it was, it was like coming up really quickly. Like the next day. Yeah, it was. It could have. Yeah. So I was like going through my calendar and my work, and I was just going to rearrange everyone and get them off of my Monday so I could observe the Sabbath. And 
Um, you know, first we were observing it according to the sliver, and then we were doing uh, we were doing world's last chance, and then we got off of that, and then we were doing the time in Jerusalem when it was, and then now we're back to world's last chance. <laughs> so I can empathize with a lot of people who are confused about the moon because we were there too, but I feel, you know, Yah has really made it clear to us that this is his calendar. We're on the, the right one this, on this call today. That This is, in my view, I'm 100% solid. This is the Sabbath day. We're on the right day. So it's been a, it's a blessing because he has a, his appointed times and he, he wants to meet with us, but we have to be there when he's calling us, not when we think it's good for us. So, uh, so I, I could stop, say more, but I don't want to be long-winded. But that's, that's all right. That's, we got you up. Well, <laughs> so, um, it, yeah, it just, uh, it just opens the, the door to just so many other, like, once you're actually observing his Sabbath, then when you're really studying the Word, other things just open up to you that you've been stumbled on for so long. Because uh, you know, his, I think his spirit is fully there on those days, and it's, it's much more fruitful. Yeah, the gates are open. Exactly. Right? So, what was your first Sabbath? They want to know when was that? Was that? I, th I think it was in February of uh, uh, of 2022. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so, so February. February. Yeah. 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 February of 22. Yep, 22. And there we are. So, so who got to be next? Uh, hand going to give you this. Okay, yeah. this is Amy, and this is James, his wife. You got the name right. Mm -hmm. Let's speak up. Well, I don't have a headset. That's good. Okay. Hi, Shalom. Um, so, yes, the reason I came into this was because I was reading about the 360 year two. And I asked my husband, please show me in scripture alone um, why our year has changed. I don't understand it. And he, like you said, he just said, I think that we're on the wrong calendar and that um, we need to be using the luminaries in the sky since man can't alter that. And the Gregorian is a new calendar and it's, it doesn't even use nature. And it uses um, planetary names for the seven day week and it uses like roman gods for the names of the month and that didn't sit right so even many years ago i knew we were on a weird calendar but i didn't have enough knowledge um to like make the switch to the lunar sabbath but once we did we noticed that we were kind of like losing friends in a way and people were afraid of us yeah. um and that was a weird experience because we had two two best friends in the walk and it was like they didn't even want to hear our testimony or how we arrived so we just felt like we were being um stifled and censored and we i trusted my husband to just kind of take a break from them even though i was desperate for friends and i honestly wanted to be in opposition to it but now we have all these other friends we just made because we were being obedient so i feel like this is the best beast i've ever been to um, and this is like my eighth year of feasting and it all is because I decided to trust my husband and trust his word and not my own comfort, um, you know, and my friends supposedly. So if anyone is on the fence, I do believe that like, this is the biggest truth right now that's being revealed in a way. Um, and that if you go to a doctor and you're using a different calendar, you can't show up at the right appointment to see him. So how much more should we be like really esteeming this matter if it's the most high? So he is our great physician who gives healing and we need to meet with him weekly, um, monthly for the new moon and yearly for the high feast. And we have to use the calendar in the sky and not the Roman counterfeit because otherwise we're gonna be missing his appointment. And I think that's a big deal. Yeah, right. So that's that's why I think this topic matters. And it's just nice meeting people here who are still doing Saturday Sabbath, but it's the opposite of what I encountered. They're actually open and hungry for truth like a child. And I believe when we get in that posture, we can be revealed so much wisdom. But if we think we know it all, or we just want to go with the flow of whatever the Hebrew readers are doing, um, I think that's when we get in trouble. So that's where I'm at. Okay. All right, well, who wants to be next here? I guess pass the computer to you. Looks okay. like Brian. Yeah, I got it right. I can send it if it'll reach. 
Uh, just so they can hear you. No, I don't think so. If I need to mute somebody else. So hi everyone, my name, my name is Brian um, uh, from uh, Western North Carolina. I uh, drove down here. I've been keeping the Lunar Sabbath for about three months now. Um, it's been a, it was a kind of a journey. Um, first, first, I guess I'll talk about how just incredible this week has been. Um, this is uh, this is definitely the the best feast I've ever Wait, been I to. While you're talking, it's already had. Go ahead. I'm putting okay. a picture up of you. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is Brian and his story. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we got the right. <laughs> um, yeah, we. Um, I guess I'll start with uh, my journey to Lunar Sabbath, because I'll explain the picture a little better. Um, uh, I, I was following the... Uh, Jadeup calendar. I've been keeping the feasts for about on and off for about six years. I wasn't a real believer. That's uh, I've been a true believer for about three years. Or yeah, you know, it's really been in my life. It's a, a long story. But uh, I was always uh, kind of frustrated with the, the mainstream Hillel calendar because uh, it's just the the idea that uh, um, that sometimes a feast day would fall on the side. Sabbath and sometimes it wouldn't, or you know, most of the time it wouldn't, but you'd end up with a feast day on the Sabbath, or you'd have a, a Sabbath and then a feast day. It's just, it didn't seem like Yah's order. It just didn't, it didn't make sense to me. And so I eventually started, you know, I started researching other calendars and I found the Zadok calendar um, and uh, started re researching the Dead Sea Scrolls. And there was order and structure to it, which was really attract attractive to me. And, and on that calendar, the feast days never fall on the Sabbath. And so um, because of that order and how everything always lined up every year, um, I was I, it was more that um, than, than the scriptures, so to say. Um, and, of course, you have to have uh, extra biblical books like Enoch and, and Jubilees, I believe, to really construct that calendar. And, and I was I was also reading those and researching them. But uh, I started to um, struggle with um, mainly Jubilees. Um, I, I just I started seeing things that seemed to contradict what what we know is true, and uh, or the word that we know is true. And uh, and then also the, the the death and resurrection timeline I didn't think was lining up on the Zadok calendar with what we read in the Gospels, and uh, so I was really really feeling like it wasn't perfect, and uh, but I didn't know what else to do, so I just I stuck with it. And then uh, one day uh, towards the end of of last year, probably uh, Gregorian November or so, I was uh, I was just I was I was actually watching a channel that was pro Zadok calendar and I'm just like skimming through the comments and had nothing to the video had nothing to do with the calendar and somebody made a post about world world's last chance and the, the true sabbath and winter sabbath and it was appealing to me i'd kind of looked into it before but the whole like james said the seven seven day weekly cycle i just couldn't get around that um and uh so i spent it was a sabbath day or the it was a saturday sabbath day and i pretty much spent that entire day binge watching the entire thing like i just oh, couldn't stop watching it because it was just it was it was very interesting and it, it just was making so much sense and one of the biggest problems i had with the zadok calendar uh, was also the moon and so it, it just didn't seem like the moon did anything and uh it was just there and i mean i guess sometimes it would appear in the same spot but it really really didn't seem to do anything. And so uh, I watched all that, but I still struggled for, for a few months and going back and forth. Um, and this was the seven day weekly cycle. Um, I was praying and I've been fasting and, and, and really um, just asking Yah. And one of the biggest things I was worried about is that I, I don't know anybody who keeps the, the Lunar Sabbath. Yeah. Or I know a lot of people that are against it. And so uh, that went on for, for about two, three months. And then, uh, one day I was I, I had this, I was actually driving back from Florida to Western North Carolina and I had downloaded a whole bunch of videos on both calendars and on the extra biblical books and I was just going to listen to this stuff all day while I was driving and this was a, this was a Friday and uh, uh, a Gregorian Friday and I was uh, I drove back listened to this all day and was still kind of up in the air but leaning towards the lunar Sabbath and. The next morning I woke up and where we were, this was towards the end of January, and there was debate on whether uh, um, 
the the lunar sabbath was was on friday or saturday at that time so i still felt like I, I felt like i was in kind of a hybrid mode at that point like not really sure where i was and but the next day would be the new moon which would have been on gregorian sunday and uh so i woke up that saturday and i just i just i'm gonna, I'm gonna do this i can't i can't keep doing saturday when i know it's gonna shift and so i made the decision that morning and uh and that morning I happened to get a friend request from the woman you saw in that picture um, <laughs> from Lindsay if the, if the picture is still up there it will be in a minute let's keep talking and uh, yeah she uh, she sent me a friend request I actually already knew who she was but um, uh, we just weren't friends so I'm not gonna get too too deep into the story but uh, um, uh, I, I knew who she was. I accepted her friend request, and then a post popped up where she was talking about how that was her last Saturday Sabbath, and she was going to be keeping the lunar Sabbath. And uh, I just, my mind was blown. I just said, "What, Father?" And then she, um, she was actually posting on, or she was, she was commenting on a post from Amy, who you just heard from who I knew from back in the day, I used to have a YouTube channel and uh, both of us had taken our channels down, but I knew who she was. We said, well, she's, she's keeping the winter Sabbath too. And then uh, I started conversing with her and Lindsay and then uh, Amy introduced me to her husband, James, and, and James had been researching the 360 day calendar. And once, once I read what he wrote about that, everything clicked when I realized that the 360 day original year and, and, and 12 perfect 30 day months and, and it all it all just clicked and then immediately i had fellowship which is just incredible and uh um and then uh um shortly after that we were we were talking about four of us were talking about where, where are we going to go for passover we've got to be with like-minded believers and then i just i grew up in north florida and so i just happened to see a north florida lunar sabbath group and joined it and because i just had to join it because i grew up in jacksonville and uh then i uh uh, met Barbara and I, I read I saw her post about the Passover here and we got on the lunar Sabbath call and now here we are it's been uh, it's been quite a journey so it's, when was your first Sabbath my first lunar Sabbath would have been um, the end of January I think yeah, um, the yeah so there. whenever the new moon was then um, I kept the new moon um, and there, there just happened to be another group in my uh, one town over that I found about that day that was doing a new moon <laughs> celebration. Yeah. Yeah. They keep the low calendar, but I still went oh, and met yeah. with them. So sure. it's another confirmation from Yah that yeah. I just happened to. So it's only been three months. Yeah, yeah. only three months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> January 29th. Yeah. January 29th. Give me a picture of. It was a perfect uh, oh yeah I did yeah and what yeah and that and that, yeah, and that was what was amazing is that yeah, the next Saturday. I did a bunch of work around my house and I went to the barber shop and did a bunch of things and I felt kind of just free from the system. It, is, it wasn't that I hated not being able to work on Saturdays, but I, did, I was just outside working and uh, uh, I changed the brake pads on my truck and it, it was it was evening as I was about to walk in my house. I just happened to look up and I saw that perfect first quarter moon, oh. just like just as it was going from day to dusk. And it was just like another little reminder from the or just confirmation from the it was, it was amazing. So I ran and grabbed my camera and came outside, took a really good picture of it and sent it to everybody. And it was just it's been uh, it's been amazing. So. So what happened here at camp? <laughs> and so yesterday, um, even. <laughs> yes, this, this, this photo is from yesterday. <laughs> Oh, oh, you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Christina. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, this this photo was taken just yesterday, and uh, that's that's Lindsay and I. Um, uh, when we met, um, I was sending it to her. We hear you, Christina. Star six to mute and star six to unmute. Do you want to be next or wait? Huh? You already said everything. No, well, I'll just say hello. <laughs> well, wait, I have something to say. Okay, but you got to speak up because I don't have actual speakers here. 
Okay, this is Lindsay. She's the bride, and she is doing something here that we did at camp with in the middle of the week. <laughs> Just talk to us. Just don't pay attention here. Hi, I am um, with Brian, obviously. We had a wonderful um, ceremony yesterday. Um, our, we got betrothed or engaged, rather, yes. same thing. Yeah. And it's been very quick, but it's been very right. We had um, so many reasons that were straight from Yah that um, we needed to be together. So that's what we're doing. We're listening to him and the Lunar Sabbath brought us together. And it's just um, never felt so sure about something. So we're embracing it. So that's um, Passover has been amazing. Um, we love Barbara and um, be coming back forever. So. <laughs> Um, we, we, um, so I, a lot of the things that Brian and I have in common are very natural and survival. Um, I teach foraging and, um, I guess survival, well, food-based survival skills. Um, and Brian's more of the hunting survival-based skills, so we make a good team. But I did a little class this week about foraging and, uh, the biblical diet and what uh, I think Yah wants us to eat and um, we just need to be more mindful of his creation and I'm taking back with the new age soul so we are um, teaching about his garden and his herbs and his food um, instead of worshiping the creation we are acknowledging the creator and it's been really fun so we went over all the plants that are edible around this area and we tried them um, it's been a lot of fun. We, you know. And for, for, for the Passover meal, we actually went around the property and picked some bitter herbs, which was, which was a lot of fun, and we had it with our meal. Yeah, so we found a few bitter herbs for Passover meal, and that was really cool just to find them on our property. And um, it was really magical. I don't know what else. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, all right, now. How about if we have somebody here on the call talk? It can be uh, Christina or Ellie or Scott, somebody that was here who would like to talk for a minute, and then we'll go to somebody else in the room. I will talk, Barbie. Okay, Ellie, good. Yeah, I want to yeah. say congratulations to, um, to Lindsay and, uh, and Brian. Um, I think you guys have a good match and uh, made in heaven. So I want to say that first of all, and it's too bad you didn't do it when I was there. <laughs> I would have liked to have been part of it. But anyway, oh. it was a, a great Passover feast. And I was, I've was i been a Lunar Sabbath keeper now probably five, maybe going on six years. I met Barbie at a Passover feast about that time ago, and she gave me some information on Lunar Sabbath, and it blew me away because I was a Saturday, I was a Saturday keeper, <clears throat> and when I started to read this, it just really contradicted everything that I believed, and uh, so I had, I studied it for about three months, and I was keeping both Sabbaths. I was keeping the Lunar Sabbath and the Saturday Sabbath, but then it got to be to the point where it was just too much. Um, because I'm alone and I take care of 10 acres and it seems like every week I was keeping two Sabbaths <laughs> and sometimes three when new moon showed up. So it just got to be too much. So I eventually gave up the Saturday Sabbath and, um, and that was hard because I knew a lot of people in the church and I really liked them and fellowshiped with them. But um, I would say that the feast was great, um, really uh, enjoyed the talks, really enjoyed what really stuck out to me was all the young people that were there. I think the oldest was Barbie and me and Keith. Hey, watching <laughs> any old people here. <laughs> this is older, Barbie. Second one in is Allie that's talking. For those of you that haven't seen her before. Yeah. Oh, the, the, all, the rest, all the rest were younger, which was a really, uh, I would say, an eye-opener, a blessing uh, to see such young people coming up and learning the truth mm -hmm because so many young people today are so close-minded about everything and there's so much of the world. So it was a huge blessing to meet, you know, James and Amy and, and uh, Kristen and, uh, you know, Brian and, and all of them, all of them. Um, so um, <clears throat> I don't know what else to say except that uh, I had to come home 
And I'm uh, sorry I didn't get to stay till today, folks, but I've mm-hmm. got company coming in a, a day, and I've got to be at the accountants tomorrow to sign papers for taxes. And um, anyway, I really miss you guys, and uh, I just wish you all the best. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll go to somebody in the room here now. Who wants to be next? Jake or? Well, I'll, I'll just do it. Wait, Christina's Go ahead, Christina. Hi, everybody. I really miss you all. It was really beautiful being there. And um, you guys can hear me properly? Yes. There's Christina on the end. Can you hear me properly? We're hearing you, but you, I can hear you. Okay. So, yeah, I've been uh, doing the feast for many years, but I was always uh, very interested in the calendar, and the calendar actually literally tortured me at night, not knowing when I was leaving. It was the real time, how we we're going to meet the Father if we're not reading the right calendar. And at some point, um, his spirit came onto me and really imprinted on me that I really needed to understand, and we all needed to understand the calendar, and this was super important. If not, we were not able to talk to him and prophesy. He told me, you won't be able to prophesy. You need to know this thing. So more I got obsessed with the calendar, and... um, living um, there in the ministry with Walter. We were for many, many years keeping this uh, calendar, but I wasn't completely convicted until I totally understand that the Bible is really written in the skies and in nature, and it's just really simple. It's really organically in nature, and I don't need to complicate with all the other things that they were made by men, you know, all these other theologies and uh, calendars are made by men. And when I understood that, it just brought a complete peace and a conviction of doing the new moons also every month, and my life started getting better. And this weekend, you guys gave me so much hope to see young people, you know, younger people than me, because I still consider myself young, but younger that really are looking for the truth and really are like committing to study the truth and the scriptures for yourself. And it's so nice to see that you have the courage to do it and the commitment. And I think that's why the father uh, gave this wonderful testimony this, that, you know, they met through the calendar in the heavens because it was his appointed time. He can, he can, work through us if we're connecting in time and space with him if we're really connected so i thought that was an amazing testimony that they got married this way and i'm really enjoying and hope everybody gets to study this important topic so that's a long talk Uh, we can't hear you, Barbie. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Miss Layla. Can you hear me now? Can you yes, hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Great. Okay, go ahead. Uh, if I mute it here, then I can't get back. Okay, go ahead, Tim. Sorry. So uh, I think you guys recognize me from uh, talking maybe a few times here or there for the last couple of years on the conference call. Yeah, where are you? Sitting? Are you going to show them the picture? I'm trying to show a picture. You keep talking. So we had an enjoyable time this feast. It's my first time um, coming down here for um, Passover. and. Where are you, being able to go in the ocean and go oh, swimming in the springs is ocean. an important thing to me because, you know, it's time that you can just kind of spend out in nature and with, you know, with the family, with the children and relaxing and then enjoying the time I have of the it. feast. Keep talking. Don't look at this stuff. Um, but it's also very... Uh, this is Tim here. 
Whoops, they can't see it. Yeah, it's also okay, a very important um, time. I, I, I barely made it. I, 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 My car had broken down, so I almost wasn't going to um, be able to come. Um, but thankfully, I was able to get a car and then go borrow another car uh, from Jake here and drive down. Um, and it learned a lot of him interesting things. I really enjoy Enoch and Keith's uh, classes and uh, if you want to call him a rabbi, Jacob here, as opposed to Russian Jake, <laughs> had an yeah. interesting class that I really enjoyed about the war in heaven. Do you want me to share something other than just... Yeah, well, I want, um, you mentioned something about visiting Adventist churches and sharing the faith, so would you tell about one of those experiences? So, I don't know, did Jake and I ever tell you guys about when we were in the truck together and visited that church? Did well, he share just, that? Just tell us, it don't matter. We haven't heard it on a conference call. So. Should I share it? Yeah. So, um, we were at an Adventist church, and as usual, when we would visit churches, they would either talk about the law or talk about the Sabbath, and here they were talking about uh, that and I was bringing up the the lunar Sabbath a little bit and um, but then we just listened to their their uh, um, listened to the pastor's service and then afterwards uh, Jake had told me there was when he was standing there with the <clears throat> with the pastor there was a woman who showed up and she she was Catholic, and she had said that God had told her to come to church that day. And But then she was also telling the pastor about the lunar Sabbath, that we should be following with the moon. So she's a Catholic lady. She went to an Adventist church <laughs> yeah. and talked into the pastor about lunar, about going to the Sabbath by the moon. And this was after, and Jake told me this after we had already had lunch uh, with most of the people from the church and had some good conversations with them and he had shared it with them. He Then he came back and uh, told me this afterwards that this happened. And I thought it was like kind of interesting. It's like a miracle that every, and, th and this would kind of happen a lot. We would show up to churches when we were in the truck together. This was uh, the last year, right? It was like last towards the winter. And we'd show up to churches and we would have really interesting conversations um, good. with people. So um, see, a lot of people don't realize that when we, we are, when we are parked, we choose a church to go to. And it could be Sunday keeping churches or Adventist churches. And everywhere we went, this topic was always following us. Wow. It's either the pastor would preach on the law, a Sunday pastor, or a, a, a Seventh-day Adventist pastor would preach about the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that everywhere we went, and Timothy was the one that pointed out, Jacob, don't you... Don't you get a notion that this topic is always following us? Because every yeah. church that we we went to, it, it's always yeah. the same thing over and over and over. And so uh, that day I was so surprised how this lady, I was just standing there across the pastor because I wanted to greet him, but I, don't, I didn't want to intervene because there are so many people coming to yeah, shake right. his hand. And so this lady comes up and she says, Pastor, but you're not supposed to keep the Sabbath. Uh, the Sabbath is wrong on Saturday. And I couldn't, for, at first I was like, Wait, what was she trying to say? And then she mentions, she said, the Sabbath should be kept according to the moon. And she said, I am a Catholic lady. I just, I, apparently someone invited her. She's the first time visiting this church wow. and she's telling the Adventist pastor wow. that she he should be keeping the Sabbath according to the moon. So the Holy Spirit is revealing this to his true followers to say, Come out of her my people. And right 
somebody that would never go to an Adventist church. But that's so amazing, that, Jake. Yeah, that, that experience when I when I witnessed that, I, it just struck me the, the idea that a Catholic lady comes up to the pastor and telling her that we should be keeping the Sabbath based yeah. on the cycles of the moon. Yeah, right. So. Okay. All right. Well, let's hear from somebody else that was here. Um, oh. What did the pastor say? Um, he was just... Uh, dumbstruck he he didn't try to because everything is too new for him and he does he, he's looking at this lady like she's crazy yeah and then i said wait pastor i know exactly what she's talking about um after you greet everyone because they also invited us to a potluck i said i will explain and then I had an opportunity to share with him. Um, I left my phone number in the registry, and I told him, if you have any questions, contact. I gave uh, one of the Barb's cards to him. I don't know if he ever contacted what's going on, but it's... So you're going all over the country truck driving and planting the seed. And all of you can uh, make up a card about the Sabbath with our, our website or our YouTube channel and spread it all out. The business cards don't cost more than $50 to $50. They have a few hundred uh, printed up, and you can just spread the message everywhere. So. Yep. Yep. Okay, well, how about uh, I think Scott is here and also uh, John Hunt. So, would one of you want to say something about your experience at the feast? Or how did you find the Lunar Sabbath? We'd like to know that. I'd like to speak on the feast if I could. Yes, please. This is yeah, Scott. I had. How y'all doing? I all miss y'all too. Uh, we had a great time over there and. Um, I want to put kudos out to Miss Barbara. You really did a fantastic job, especially with nobody went hungry. <laughs> Everybody had food, and it was a pleasure to work side by side with you. And um, wish I could have stayed longer. I really do. Uh, I got to meet some very interesting people, heard a lot of different testimonies, and wrote down a lot of them, actually. And it was quite surprising to me, a lot of the New Age Pentecostal um you know, testimonies I heard who have converted, which was a wonderful thing. Um, and if you if you starved, you didn't listen to Lindsay's seminar. <laughs> Just wanted to throw that kind of a joke in there. But um, but she did a wonderful job. And meeting with Enoch uh, to me was a divine uh, meeting appointment, as they call it. Him and I got to walk side by side and spend some time together. Um, and speaking of things that really mattered to me spiritually, so. I'm thankful for meeting him and his father. I know didn't feel well, and I was praying for them as we all were. Um, and, you know, the whole experience of the cedar and the whole food experience to me is really what I really enjoyed because, you know, being a chef, it's just, and with Lindsay and, and her food and things like that, speaking on that. And most of all, the spiritual structure that was there at the camp, I'll just call it a camp, was wonderful between everybody to be with so many like-minded people. There was so much love in that air, and it was beautiful. And I just want to thank everybody for it. And that's it. I'm not going to continue. <laughs> Shalom, everyone. I guess Barbara's on mute. Go right ahead. Mike here from Canada. <laughs> yeah, well, we're having, uh, you may have joined us later, we're going around the circle with everybody that was here at Sukkot, I mean, uh, Passover. Sorry, I'm on the wrong feast. <laughs> I'm already planning for Sukkot. You're all invited to Michigan, September 29th, October 6th. But, uh, okay, Mike, we'll just hold you for later. We're talking to people that were here at this feature are here still. So, okay. 
Okay, I'll go. Um, uh, okay, yes, please go ahead. I, th I thought it was an amazing um, Passover, and Scott was just talking about divine appointments. I think the whole thing was a divine appointment for us all. And, and, and as you all witness, the amazing anomaly where not one but two people that, that I knew from another place 5,000 miles away ends up on the same day, same feast, in the same place. It was just remarkable. And I was talking to Enoch's dad about that just briefly. Uh, he's a mathematician. And uh, the probability of that is just so astronomical that it, it is a divine point. Um, God brought us all together. I believe we're all the same tribe. Uh, I enjoyed the feast immensely, and it was such a blessing, and especially the fireside chats. I agree with James on that. That was also a highlight. Um, there was even great debate, uh, not, not contentious debate, but um, intellectual debate, and uh, people listened, and there was no fighting and no division, and I thought it was beautiful. I've never been in a place, one place, with so many intelligent people that were on the same page or almost on the same page because there was, you know, maybe one or two that were not on, particularly on the, on the same page, but you know, that's okay. Um, maybe seeds were planted, maybe not, but I believe it was a divine appointment. Y'all brought us together. It was a very blessed time. I felt honored to be there amongst you guys. And it was an honor to meet every single one of you. Miss Barbara is a phenomenal host and she did a, great job um for such a small little lady to 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 put all that together to take care of so many people uh, was just a blessing to see that and and uh, uh hopefully we can we can do it again it's a coat um we'll see now as far as uh, as far as the lunars yeah, I was trying to get on here. I'm on mute. How did you find out about the lunar calendar? Uh, I've been on it for, for several years, about going on eight years now. And it was uh, Exodus 16. I saw the um, the layout there. And then, of course, coming across Troy Miller and then World's Last Chance. And there was all these other confirmations. And, of course, you. You were another confirmation. And so... Um, it's amazing to see how this has grown and how, how many people are seeing this. And it's, it's not complicated. It's actually pretty precise and mathematical. You can see the pattern laid out right there in Exodus 16. They were on that pattern for 40 years in the, in the desert. And that's the way it was. You would set that pattern and it, it is determined by the moon. The word is true. And if we go outside the Bible and to, to try to, you know, vet a calendar, and I'm talking about the Zadok, and they like to say it was in Qumran and uh, Enoch and this and that, if it's outside the Bible and it contradicts the word, we can't use it. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for letting me talk. Okay, so uh, Barbie, Barbie, who was talking? Ellie. Go ahead, Ellie. No, I just wanted to ask who was talking. Jonathan. Was talking. Oh, Jonathan. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that was Jonathan. So, all right. Well, that I think the ones that are on the call. Those are all that had to leave maybe a day or two early, and it was sad to say goodbye. But, um, so, Jake, how did you find out about Lunar Sabbath? Well, uh, originally, I come from a Baptist family. A uh, very uh, religious, large family. And when I started reading the Bible on my own, that's when I realized that you should be keeping um the law and you should be keeping the sabbath because it's one of his commandments and it's i saw the the big picture that it's either all or none so i went out I hear echo i hear your thing just because he can hear that 
Hope okay. Taylor's bugging me. Sorry. I, I am going to. Just a minute. Why don't we move that? Yeah, yeah, I didn't need to. I'm going to lower. Okay. Uh, most of you might not remember Jake's voice because he's only talked on the call once before. So uh, he's been on a call for a decade now. Go ahead, keep talking. I'm yeah. trying to get a picture of you. And so I, I went out, started proclaiming. This is Jake here in the, the center that's talking. And Russia, go ahead. Uh, proclaiming the that everybody, you know, my family, that they should be keeping the Sabbath. Well, that didn't really. Uh, do well because they would go into opposition and they would go into offensive and uh, it didn't really play out well. Anyways, I finally, I was studying on my own and I discovered all these truths, most of the truth on my own. Then I went and joined a Seventh-day Adventist church and I was a, a member since 2000, I think, six until 2012. And one day I came across uh, on the world's last chance across that the, the Sabbath is not on Sunday, nor it's on Saturday. And that kind of struck me. I... First, when I watched some videos and read some articles, I thought, wow, the devil is so devious, so smart. The way he presents and the way he creates confusion. So I made a, a plan to basically uh, try to find out some kind of a loophole uh, to figure out that this was a lie. And for many years, I did not accept uh, a lunar Sabbath. I uh, I studied here and there. Um, you know, when when you uh, I had uh, business, I was really uh, busy at that time. But um, it took me a while to actually come across the truth, uh, the pure truth. Uh, but what did for me was the fact that I did all the studies, but when I finally did the study of three months in a row, that's what did it because I, I started realizing that. And, and the way I did the study was I put the calendar right, right on the left side. And I started reading through some uh, verses, and I started seeing that every time Israelites was commanded to stop, it was all the dates are mentioned. And so I realized I, something happened in my brain said, you can't fight this anymore. It's either you have to accept it or you just continue on, you know, with your, you as usual. So it took me about uh, probably approximately anywhere from three to four years to actually change because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was busy at the same time. I, I couldn't believe that this was, you see, my difficulty was for all these years, I've been proclaiming that Saturday. the Saturday was the Sabbath yeah. to all my family. And it was difficult for me to accept because now everybody in my family, they, they all consider me to be a black sheep in the family. Yeah. Crazy one. Yeah. Comes up with all these ideas that we should be keeping the law. And they kept arguing, we are not under the law. We are under the grace of Jesus. Right. Well, anyways. And, and here I am now coming up to my family and saying, you know, I was wrong. It's not the Saturday. Because I keep showing them the calendar saying, see, look. Saturday is the seventh day of the week, not the Sunday. Sunday is the Roman Catholic Church institution, and that this is their doing, changing. And I was, I would argue, look, Daniel 7:25 predicted this that the, he would change times and laws, and it was difficult for me to accept the lunar Sabbath because 
Oh, come on. Now they can... They have... They finally have a proof that I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Because now I'm, I'm coming up with this idea that the Sabbath is not on Saturday or Sunday. It's somehow... Um, is corresponding to the cycles of the moon. So it took me a while, but I finally saw it. I realized that was the truth. And ever since, I started keeping it. And, and can I just interject there, since Jacob is talking, because he's the other, one of the other guys that I've run into from another place. He and I bonded on this thing. The lunar Sabbath. When I first met him, I was, you know, he and his brothers took care of me in a, in a hostel and uh, looked out for me and fed me. And uh, when Jacob found out that, because I took the Sabbath and I was keeping the Sabbath, and he was doing it on that same day. And his brother Daniel says, wait a minute, you're, you're keeping a Sabbath today? I was like, yeah. He was like, Jacob's on the Sabbath today. And it wasn't Saturday. It was like, you know, in the middle of the week or something. And so we bonded on that. And uh, I lost contact with him and then run into him at this feast. And I think he would, like I said, the divine appointments, bringing people together for a reason. And um, I don't think you're crazy, brother. And I think it was another witness for your family, your brother. Because I remember him making fun of you when, when we were talking about it and uh, kind of laughing and stuff. But I think it, it brought credibility to what you saw. And it probably took a lot of courage to just kind of admit you were wrong and, you know, declare this. But, yeah, this it's amazing that we bonded on this. Okay, Jay, go ahead. And then... So many years, I'm already used to everybody making fun. I don't... I At, at some point, I already said to myself, you know, I don't care. <laughs> Whatever you think of me... I don't care. Okay. I'll just have to do, focus to do whatever I have to do. Okay. Go yeah. Ahead, James. I was just, when you were speaking about telling everyone about the Saturday Sabbath, I was reminded of a time in my life when it never felt right for me. Every time I was telling friends and family, like, I can't do it on Saturday's the Sabbath, Saturday's the Sabbath. I knew Saturday was not a, a good, like, it's not a good word, yeah, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, a Saturn's yeah. day, and it reminds me of the verse in um, Hosea 2.17, for I will take away the names of Balaam out of your mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And, you know, we were all... But when you come to the Lunar Sabbath, you're no longer speaking the names of Baal as yeah, your, your, uh, your Sabbath day of... your day of Sabbath. Yeah, when I was keeping Saturday Sabbath, I would never say Saturday because I knew that was a bad mm -hmm. word. Yeah. It was for Saturn. Yeah. But uh, did, when you grew up, tell them a little bit, did you, how come you were on Saturday? Uh, growing up, um, well, my mom, my dad had a division. You know, my mom was studying scriptures um, and while well, my dad was at work and then she ultimately came to realizing that the Torah has not been done away with, and my dad was still in Christianity. So that caused a lot of division, ultimately leading to the divorce. And so growing up, you know, my, my, my dad got full custody of, it, of us, but when I was with my mom, you know, to the best of her ability, you know, she still struggled sometimes, like, holding that foundation of observing the Saturday. She, she didn't make much money. And, you know, so, so that was also confusing growing up. Was she yeah. Adventist or Jewish? No. Or? Yeah, uh, I mean, my, my grandfather was Jewish. And after he died, she, she really was getting into understanding her Jewish roots. So that's, yeah, she was a, she, yeah, that's kind of how that started. Yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah, so but like part of the time I was with my dad. And, you know, going to Baptist church and, you know, doing that. And the world accepts that. And then my mom, this is back in the early 90s, I thought that she was the only person in the world that believed what she believed. So that's why every time I come to these feasts and I see so many other like-minded people, it still blows my mind. If I really sit back and think about it, because I remember when I was 10 years old, I couldn't imagine that there's even anyone that thinks even remotely close to my mom, you know, but... Crazy his name. Uh, yeah. Mom was right after yeah, all. Yeah, mom was right after all. That's right. I mean, 
Okay. I was wondering, um, Scott, how did you come to the lunar Sabbath out there on the conference call there? Jeff Scott was here with us. He had to leave a little bit early because there's something happened. He had to go cover at work. So we missed him. We missed everybody that was here. They had to leave a couple of days early, but we still have a group of 12 from about 29 down to 12 now, but it's been wonderful. Uh, can you, how did you find out about the Lunar Sabbath, Scott? Are you able to tell about it a little bit? Maybe he had to leave. Maybe he had to go. Okay. All right, well. Hello, hello, can I be heard? Yes. Uh, who is this? Who is this? You don't recognize my voice, Barbara? It's Michael. Yay, Michael, we missed you so much. Go ahead, uh, Michael. Of course I knew who it was. I was going, is that Michael? Well, I've been uh, listening to the entire uh, conference call today. Um, I have you on my computer and uh can you talk a little louder or closer to your phone without the speaker because yes, I'll, uh, I'll get it. is this better is this better is this better yeah it's a little bit, yeah. a little bit. that's about the best it's going to be because i'm looking at you through a tablet and it's very close to my face at this point <laughs> so uh anyway i just wanted to say that just today I mean, I've been with you every day of this feast. Today is the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and I have thought of you all. Well, not the ones that I haven't met yet, but the ones that I know. I've thought of you every day since, since Passover. Uh, and I truly miss not being there. However, I believe in Romans 8:28, uh, which simply says, all things work together for them that love him. And my absence was necessary. You know, as a matter of fact, the day after the day after Passover evening, my wife got sick. I had to be here at the take her to take her in to the, to, to, to uh, see a see a doctor. So I mean I wasn't there, but I have been blessed. And for those of you who don't know me, who have never heard me, I've been observing, to the best of my ability, the Lunar Sabbath for about eight years now, and have gone back and forth on some issues, but I'm back where I started. Uh, and I must say, the um, World's Last Chance was actually the first real clear teaching that I had on it. Um, I think I was just scrolling. I was just, I've always been a student of scripture, and I've always been wondering about certain things, and when I started to realize the pagan origins of the calendar, the Gregorian calendar, and the, the, the pagan uh, realities of the days of the week, and when I started to investigate Sad, Saturn's day, it started to just really shake me because I realized that there's something wrong here. And then I did research regarding the, um, the, the fact that there is no mention of a an uninterrupted continual weekly cycle of seven days it doesn't exist in scripture there, there there it doesn't you cannot find evidence for a continual weekly cycle of seven day weeks it doesn't and one of the brothers before was speaking about how he was studying the you know three months a three month study that's something also from world's last chance that that affected me and I said, wow, this is just amazing. And even for many years ago, many years ago, I wondered why the time prophecies of, um, in Scripture rendered by the early Seventh-day Adventists and William Miller and all those people, why did, why did they consider a year having 360 days? I wondered about that because I've been, that, that was a question mark in my mind for the past 30 years. And then when I came to uh, the very first Passover invitation, I didn't, I wasn't invited to be a speaker or anything. I just came because it was at your house. It was at your, your place, Barbara. I don't know if you remember. It was a number of years ago. And, of course, uh, I remember your first time here and every, every time you've been here. Yes. Well, I'm just saying that that was when 
the idea of the 360-day original uh, calendation, 12 months of 360 days each. That became a very, very strong reality in my mind. And ever since then, I cannot, I can never go back to observing something that has been invented by man. Worst of all, devised by Jesuit priests and popes. I can't, just can't do it. I was born and raised a Catholic, you know, and when I was a young guy, when I was a, a teenager, I saw the solemnity and how solemn their services were, and I was even thinking of becoming a priest, a Catholic priest, when I was about 15 or 16 years old. But fortunately, <laughs> that never happened. And uh, I just became aware, and uh, I, I'm just rejoicing to hear the testimonies today. Uh, again, as someone had mentioned, the young people, some of the younger people who have received this light and are walking in it, it is, it is marvelous for me to hear. Because I don't know about the rest of you, but it's hard to find people to talk to. You can't walk into a Seventh-day Adventist church and start talking about this stuff. They look at you and they don't want to talk. Either that or they, they get, it's just very strange. Yet many, I spent many years as a Seventh-day Adventist. I attended two of their seminaries uh, for a while, studying to be a, become a, a, a pastor, a minister. I did, I, I did become ordained as a minister, as a pastor, by Seventh-day Adventists. But I have long left what they hold to. The Saturday Sabbath, for one thing. Uh, the humanity of Messiah. I mean, there are a number of issues that I cannot agree with that are commonly taught within the Seventh-day Adventist uh, structure. So I haven't been one for many years, about eight, eight, ten years, ten, twelve years now. I still see them. They still see me. But they all think that I've kind of lost it or something. <laughs> but um, in any event, I'm planning still to attend future events Sukkot, maybe I, maybe I can make that one, Barbara, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I'm, we've got a lot of time between now and then. And uh, if time should last, we don't know. I mean, the way, the, the, way the world is, 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 is looking right now, we don't know when things are going to really start to wind down and we're going to become limited as far as traveling, etc. But um, I just missed you all. I miss the ones that, that know me, that are listening to me now. I missed you all. I truly did very much. And just today, to hear the voices and to have the chance to be a part of this final meeting, you know, on this, uh, this last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, I, uh, I'm happy and very blessed to be among you. So... That's all I'll say for now. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> uh, Barbara just put up a, uh, right. a Yeah, for, thank you, Michael. For those of you that are on the Internet, I put a picture up of Michael, and he has on um, Facebook, he, has, he does a ministry on Facebook, too. So, And a lot of his, um, he's done a lot of videos that are on the YouTube channel and on the website. In fact, yeah, I'm I'd like to, I would like to say one last thing, and um, I must confess, I'm not confessing to you as priests, <laughs> but I'm confessing to you as brothers and sisters who love the Most High, and I'm sure that you love me too, or I wouldn't share this, but I have been plagued with, with circumstances here at my house regarding my, um, regarding my animals. Uh, I lost four of my close they're friends to me. They're like children. I mean, all of my children are grown, so my dogs are my children. Now, I lost four of them. I buried one yesterday. And uh, it's been painful. It's been very painful. But I just want you to know that listening to your voices today and hearing the confirmation of truth that I have believed for a long time, hearing it coming from you, all of you, has been a great, very encouraging experience to me. I'm very happy. And I just want you to know, thank you, Barbara, for giving me a chance to express myself to those who are still there. I truly missed Enoch. I was hoping to meet his father, too, but I'll get back in touch with him. And um, Oh, I just wanted to ask, too, um, 
were the messages recorded that were presented? Because I would like to take a look at them, if they're going to be on YouTube or something. Were they recorded? You not you not recorded all of them. Okay, Thank great. You. Well then, I, I need to get that list. Well, I'll contact Enoch and say I need the list, and he'll send it to me. All right. Well, that's all I have to say. I thank you. Yes, I thank you all. I am blessed. I am extremely baruch. I am happy <laughs> to at least be a part of you to this extent, expressing myself. I'm a gospel presenter. A lot of people don't even know what the gospel is. If you ask somebody, ran yesterday I was at a music store, and and this pastor from this Sunday church came in, and I asked him. I said, "What is the gospel?" And he looked at me. He said, you're the second person who asked me that question in two days. And his answer was sort of right, but still not right. You know, most of the sermons that you hear from the churches, including the Seventh-day Adventist Church, are messages of advice, good advice, or do this and you'll be okay, or don't do that or you'll be condemned. No, that's not the gospel. The gospel is good news, period. It's not something that we can earn or merit. It is something that was given to us as a free gift through the Son of the Most High, Yahushua HaMashiach. It was, it was a gift given through him. That is what the gospel is, period. So anyway, I was hoping to share some of those messages. I mean, my emphasis on that point. Maybe next year. Know. Who knows? If, when Michael around. Collins said he was, yeah, when Michael Collins said he wasn't coming, and he said all these things, and I said, "Well, we gotta praise Yah," and so we said, "Praise Yah from whom?" And he started singing. Of course, Michael has an opera voice, but he heard. Uh, Not really, but um, yeah. you no, know, I'm known as a singer. I'm known as a musician and as a singer. I was gonna bring my. I have a keyboard here. I'm sitting right in front of it now. Um, that I. I, I purchased really. I purchased it on credit. It's a thousand dollar keyboard. Sounds like a grand piano. It has all it has bells and whistles on it. I can make recordings with it to sing with, or I can I, I can produce beautiful beautiful music with it. In any event, I was going to bring that on this trip, but it fell but through. We prayed, yeah, and you just said why? We you had to stay. You were concerned about your wife, and you did need to be there. So we're going to move right along. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, Thanks for the chance to speak. I wanted to ask, yeah, so we miss you so much. And the most of these people haven't even met you. But um, I wanted to ask Brian, too. Uh, James. <laughs> Brian did a teaching, too. But I have James here, and he has uh, some information for you. And why did you get this information? Why were you studying the year? Well, this is, you know, i uh, if Yah, you know, Yah's creation from the beginning, you know, he made it perfect. Yeah, he made it perfectly, right? He made it, um, when someone pointed out that a circle has 360 degrees, I was like, why would he make it any different than that, right? Everything's in, in precise and precision. So that kind of took me on that study. You know, I, the verses in Genesis were pointed out to me about the, the 30 day months, five consecutive months of Noah's Ark. So, okay, so that declared to me that for sure the year was 360. And what's interesting in Hebrew, um, the year means uh, Hashanah. And every, in Hebrew, every uh, letter is assigned a numerical value. Okay. And then actually Hashanah adds up to 360. Oh, so that was like kind of the first thing um, that got me thinking about that. And then... And then obviously, you know, everyone points to the verse in Kings about the sundial of Ahaz turning back uh, 10 degrees. Well, on a sundial, you know, um, it, it measures the 12 hours of light in a day. So, you know, when the, sun, when the sun sets, it's only keeping track of the daylight hours. Well, 12 degrees on a sundial, or sorry, sorry, 10 degrees on a sundial is equivalent to 20 minutes. And so if 20 minutes were added to each day over the course of a year, I think that would be like 7,200 minutes. And if you divide that, divide that up by how many hours, it's 120 hours. And then that's five days were added. Now that's, so that it goes from 360 to 365. Well, we know that a year is 365.2424, something along that one, those lines. So it's like, well, it's only 12, the, the sun is only up for 12 hours 
during the equinoxes, the fall and spring equinoxes. So actually, I was talking to Brian about this. And so yeah, about 15 days after uh, um, the first of the year, which is around Passover, and 15 days prior to Yom Teruah, um, when the when the day length is 12 hours and 34 minutes, and I think in 58 seconds, if you take 10 degrees of that on the sundial, then that gives you the 365.24 days. So that's where my current understanding is, yeah. where we're kind of leaning to. Now I still, you know, Barbara kind of threw me on the spot here. I'm not quite ready to just put this all out there because I've also been considering how the, the, the long day with Joshua has incorporated into that. Um, so in my, my, my information now may change, you know, the longer I do this study, but, um, it's, it's interesting. And so if it was changed around the first of the year around Passover and that the, the sun would have been perfectly for it to change to where it is at now, or if it would have been closer to the fall feast. Yeah. So, um, that was, and that's also what's interesting is, you know, Brian pointed out to me is that, you know, he's always confused how you would see the, the moon during the day because in, in Yaz and original design, the moon ruled the night. So if that be the case, if it's a 30 day cycle, if the moon were to go through its phases, the moon is actually it's the light. It's a, uh, it gives off light. It's not a reflector from the sun. It actually is self-illuminating. It's the less, lesser light. It's not the lesser reflector. It's the lesser light. And so when the sun would set, what I believe how his design looked like is that um, Yah's design, when the sun would set, the moon would rise right after sunset every day for 30 days, and it would go through its phases perfectly. And then the, and then the one day where it would rise and you don't see a moon, you know, in between those two days is your two new moon day. And then when you see the, the sighting after sunset the next day is when you would know you begin your work week. Um, so that's how it would, I believe how it would work on a 30 day uh, cycle. So that's why it would be so clear to point out, okay, this is Shabbat. This is, you know, the Sabbath. You would, every time you see the moon, as you know, it would line up perfectly with the full moon on the 15th, the quarter phases on the 8th and the 22nd. And then uh, you wouldn't see the moon during the new moon, but you would see the last sighting of it after sunset on the 29th. And if you had a 30, 30 day month, you know, so a lot of the Enoch people, um, they're saying it's aligned with the spring equinox. Well, I believe in the beginning, the first new moon of the year fell exactly on the spring equinox. And then, and then the fourth new moon of the year fell exactly on the summer solstice. And then the seventh new moon of the year, when we celebrate Yom Teruah, that would fall exactly on the, the fall equinox. And then the 10th new moon of the year would fall in the winter solstice. And, you know, but it matters established by two or three witnesses. So the sun and the moon and stars would all be in unison. It's not just that, you know, people accuse lunar solar Sabbath keepers as being moon, uh, moon only, even though it says in the name lunar solar, but you know, there's this movement with the Enoch calendar. Be it's just a solar only. I don't even like the the phrase Enoch calendar because I I don't believe Enoch stood for that at all. He didn't. Um, they're just using his name to establish it. But it's a solar only calendar. That'd be more accurate. What they should be calling it, a solar only calendar. Yeah, actually, something I want to say earlier, earlier when you mentioned the the jubilee uh, the Shemitah cycle and how it's interrupted by the jubilee. I mean, it just made me kind of think for a second that, you know, what we've been talking about, the 360-day calendar, you know, being perfect with the moon starting on the spring equinox, and it kind of, I kind of thought for a second, wow, if that's how the sun and the moon move through the sky and perfectly like that, I mean, of course, obviously there's a creator, but if, if that's what all the cultures observed, why would it even need to be written in scripture? Because you know, see, if it just did that every month, yeah, yeah. that would explain right. why it's not in the Torah because it's just right. what it does. That there's no questioning, you know, what what day of the of the week it is, or when when you're looking at the moon and you see this every night, the sky is telling you. Yeah, no. And so that's, that's it kind of occurred to me. That's that's probably why we don't have it spelled out for us. Yeah. 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 So I'm I'm still doing the I'm still doing the study. I you know. Barbara likes what I said. Then 
I'd be open to doing a presentation with actual the graphics to show the numbers. I, I, I'm a visual learner myself. Me too. So if I'm just hearing someone talk, I don't know how much I could <laughs> grasp it, but um, I would like to put together a presentation, even though I'm not technologically savvy at all, because it give me some time. And then I love to put that to do it sometimes. Yeah. You can just read it. If you have something, you can read it. Yeah. Now, uh, Jonathan, I know you're probably still here. I wanted to say to everybody, we had a guest come here and speak that was is from the Adventist Church here next door. He had a different view on creation. But he is surrounded by all these Lunar Sabbath people <coughs> here, and he's straight, straight out of the church and never keeps feast or anything. So after he did his talk about Genesis 1 and 2, then... Uh, somebody said well do you want to know what we believe <laughs> and so then he was kind of stuck with everybody here talking <laughs> and uh giving him yeah Jim and uh, Jim did that well do you want to know what we believe and then he was cornered you know he couldn't get out of here but uh Jonathan you want to uh, what does somebody have something to say uh Jonathan would you or uh, tell us what he was saying and how you were rebutting that his view right so um and i didn't mean to make him uncomfortable but he sure seemed uncomfortable didn't he yes <laughs> he's very confident I and mean, he's written a bible concordance he's rewriting the bible i mean this guy's got a, a brain i guess so and he's very yeah. good at teaching yeah i noticed when when you know you confront him about this you know continuous seven day cycle and you know because i i outright out I said, so you think that Shabbat is Saturday, right? And so is this what you believe that Yeshua was on? Yada, yada, yada. And he said, yes, and but yet he, he can't show it. He cannot show it with scriptures, but he's very confident. He's very confident in that. And uh, he's, he seemed to be, um, he'd like, it, like he was changed the subject a, a few times. I did notice that. He tried to go to, from that conversation to angels partaking of the passover lamb and and stuff like that and i and kind of deflecting so um i stood there just kind of let, let him you know do his thing and, and speak and i didn't want to dominate but then you know he said something about the um you know things being done away with and that's when i said you know, would you agree that he's the same yesterday, today, forever? And that he said he never, he never changes. These are my feasts for all your generations forever, yada, 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 and went through all of that. And he seemed, you know, kind of stumped at that and wanted to deflect it to, oh, it was, you know, that was, that was the uh, old covenant for the Jews. And, you know, new covenant, you know, and, but nothing solid. Um, it, it seemed like he was unprepared to answer for what he believed. He was very confident in what he believed, but he, he just couldn't defend it well. And when you show him that there is a, clearly a pattern in Exodus 16, it lays it out, and it's at 8, 15, 22, 29, and they were on that for 40 years, and it's clear it's connected to the moon and to the agriculture. And so they didn't get that from Babylon. You know, that's another argument I hear from some of these that are on a continuous seven-day cycle that, oh, the moon observations from Babylon. No, it's not from Babylon. Actually, Daniel took the information to Babylon, but he didn't learn it there. Um, it was already established in something that he understood very well. So that doesn't fly. Um, yeah, so... I, I hope we planted seeds um, and didn't make him feel cornered. And, you know, I kind of joked around and said, you know, I'm sure he laid in his bed that night and thought about everything that he heard and probably didn't sleep well. And I really hope he, he goes and, and researches it out. And that's, that's what really happens, especially to someone who's a, who's a um, scholar or a researcher, and you kind of get them in a place where they can't answer something, that don't bother them, and they'll have to answer it. And that, that kind of happened to me, and I know a few other people, and what happened is, well, you, you, you end up getting calibrated, right? The Bible calibrates. It'll get you in line and in tune. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what other pe people's take was on it, but um, 
I certainly wasn't trying to be contentious or anything, but uh, I, I feel very confident in this this observance that we are in, and that is in line with what the Father has um, has laid out. Yeah, and I think his point of view mostly was he didn't keep the feast, and the feasts were done away with, and and then he talked about high Sabbath. And oh, that's right. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He just focused on the feast, and the, all that was done away with. Yeah, go ahead, Jonathan. And then it, it, it's, it, you know, the, the Passover, done away with. Now we have the communion, and I, that's when I spoke up again. And I was like, wait a minute. You think Yeshua established the Eucharist, and obviously, yeah, that he does. He, you know, he tried to go into that uh, that thing again, how these are done away with, and it's types and shadows, and, you know, we're not going to have the Passover. Are you thinking, he, he, you know, asking, you're going to keep killing lambs for Passover? And, da, 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 and, you know, and I don't know any Hebrew that is doing that. We're all just coming in to, I'm sure there are, but, but. For the most part, not not everyone's killing lambs. They're just going and buying it. <laughs> you know, it's not like that. That's part of the ritual. We, we're just commanded to have that, right? Um, we're still learning. It's not it's not like you know this is a salvation thing, and so we we strain at th- these these issues like that and and go around the the obvious is we're supposed to be doing it. We're supposed to be keeping in all our generations, not uh, adding to the word and saying it's done away with. I can't find anywhere it says that thing, these are done away with or nailed to the cross or any of that kind of stuff, you know. Okay, so um, he kept saying high Sabbath, and that's what everybody's been taught, that 15th of the month was a high Sabbath only and not a weekly Sabbath. So what do you say about that, Jonathan? Well, the reason they call it a high Sabbath is because it's when a feast falls on a Sabbath, and it does happen. Um, it happens on both ends of the spectrum, at Passover time and at Sukkot time. There is a full moon on the 15th. That is a Sabbath. So um, it lines up with the Sabbath because it's part of it. It's keeping count with the moon. And so if you have a Passover, and it's not at, at a full moon time, for instance, this, this happened with the uh, congregation I was with la- uh, last year or year before last that was not on this calendar. They're on the Zadok thing, and the moon is not a, not anything that they observe. And the moon was um, it was off. It was not a full moon. It was like um, a gibbous or something like that, or even less. So it was way off. Nothing lined up with it. And they... You know, on their calendar, they have to intercalate to make their um, resurrection week fit with, with, you know, what they're observing. And so that should be a red flag, too. And, and if your calendar, you have to manipulate it to get it to fit, then it's wrong. The moon does that. If you observe the moon correctly, it'll fall perfect. Yeah. No one needs to tell the clock how to do, how to do its job, right? Right. Well, anybody here have a question? Uh, there some, might be someone here that can answer it, or maybe Jonathan or someone here in this room, but there may be newcomers on here today. We'll take a minute for some questions or comments about what we've been talking about. Yes, I have a couple of questions. Can you hear me? Uh, go ahead. Uh, but you have to speak up louder, please. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we're hearing you. Okay. You need to be louder, though. Okay, I'll try to be a little louder. That's a lot better. Thank you. Okay, so I, I've been uh, keeping Lunar Sabbath for about a year, and I fought with it. About two years ago, I came in contact with the idea, and I thought it was crazy. I laid it, I laid it down, walked away from it for about 10 months, and then back into it and started doing deep study into it. Uh, listening to everything I could find on the internet, talking to everybody I could find to talk to. 
and about a year ago, I finally realized that it was the way to go. And I've been keeping it since. I've been wanting to put together a calendar. I've been impressed by Father to put together a calendar that does a little more than any of the calendars that I've seen so far that have been produced by the different groups out there. And in getting into that, I began to measure the time between new moons. And I, I discovered that from one new moon to another, the time would often vary, sometimes as much as 12 hours that, and yet everybody was telling me that the average time of the new moon was like 29 and a half days or 0.53 days. But for example, one month you would have 29 days and three hours and 50 minutes. Then the next month it might jump to 29 days, 16 hours and 20 minutes. Then the next month it would go from 29 days, 12 hours and eight minutes. And then the next month it would go 29 days, 13 hours and two minutes. And then 29 days, eight hours and 35 minutes. And it would go backwards and forwards, never never up and down for like a six month cycle. I could have sort of understood that, but it was bouncing back and forth. And I'm wondering, is there anybody out there that understands why the cycles of the moon seem to vary that way? Okay, um, thank you. And uh, we'll have uh, first, Brian, have you got a comment about it? And then Jonathan, and we'll just stick with these two answers. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the moon, the, the, the motion of the moon is irregular um, ever since the change was made uh, with Hezekiah. I think with the fact that the sun now, um, the sun now, now is, is off, the moon doesn't function correctly. Um, and I mean, you could get, you could look, I mean, the, the sun is, I mean, my, my belief in this is, you know, the, the, the sun is con typically considered male and the, the moon is considered female. And so it's like, it's kind of like you could look at it as the, you know, the husband of the leader is out of sync. So, so is the, is the, is the wife that's following him. And so she says it's not consistent like it used to be. It's not a consistent, perfect 30 days. Right? And, and I think that's also, um, I think when 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 Yah set uh, when he he made the change because I because I believe the change was made with Hezekiah I I don't know about Joshua I, I I need to research that more but I do believe the change was made with Hezekiah I believe it was a judgment on on Israel but also the pagan nations and the whole earth and I believe he did it to allow this um, this chaotic universe theory to take over and for the enemy to create. Uh, for the enemy to create, to, but and so, and I, I think it was a judgment to to uh, create this this chaotic world that we live in, where you know everything's kind of random and it's not perfect and there's no order. And y'all allowed this uh, as a test and as and as a judgment, and that's why it's the way it is. That, that's kind of how I, how I see it. So I think we have to have a lot of faith, too, because it's not perfect. And some people look at it and say it's not exactly seven days or it's not exactly 29 and a half. And then it doubts and shakes them where they don't want to believe. So, um, Jonathan, do you have a comment or an answer? Uh, yeah, and I would just have used different words. I wouldn't have said that, that the moon is not working properly. It has definitely changed from what, what we know um, historically about it. I would call it perturbation, but it has equalized and it is working properly in its function and what it does. It does lay out the years and the seasons with the sun. Um, it is what farmers go by for planting and harvest and, and several things. A uh, perfect example to point out, the Aviv time, we talked about this around the fire, that at that time of the year, you will see the moon in the sky like a bowl on, in, on its side. Um, and then it will all, it would change for each month um, till it's, um, you know, standing straight up, if that makes any sense. That, that's a part of the clock and how it's functioning. It does oscillate a little bit. It has an elliptical motion 
if that makes any sense. Um, so that's going to vary from month to month. And this is why we are called to be witnesses, right? Not just the seventh month, but all months to, to know how the, the, the month is going to be laid out. See, there you go. Perfect picture right there. You see that, how it's illuminated on the bottom? And this is right after sunset at the equinox, just after sundown. This time of year, a bee, that's what the moon will look like. It's a harvest moon, you guys. It's it's like the barley harvest. And it's a bowl. So that's just one way of looking at, at the, the moon in its season and determining um you know the the month. Um a bee. When you're looking for a bee, it's not just the barley, it's the moon, the sun, where they are. It's nature all around, but also the barley. We can't we can't just take that. Um, and, and farmers don't do that, by the way. They don't just look at the fruit. They also look at the surrounding and the observation of the of what's going on all around. So is looking at the moon, is that moon worship? No, it's, it would be silly. That would be like, you know, me walking through my kitchen and looking up to see what time it is, is, is an act of observation. It's not me worshiping the clock. Unless I stopped in the kitchen and, and got on my knees and, and lifted up my hands and say, oh, mighty clock on the wall, how you, how you, that's worship, right? We don't do that. It is a clock. We observe it, and that's that. The Father's communicating with this, by the way. He's telling us, he, and he's the one that controls it. it. It can't be, you know, manipulated by man. Well, I guess, you know, things could be obscured. We could get chemtrailed and things like that, and that we can't see, you know, the, the, the objects that he's given us for a clock. But they can't change it. It is what it is. Okay, um, while we have time, maybe for one more question from you out there on the conference call. And try to have a, yes, go ahead. Is this APA? Yes. yes. Good. Yay, from Alaska. Tim is running right over here to hear you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just want to answer the brother's question. The reason why it does do that, why is it, it, it is what the brother says. It fluctuates like that. And the 29 and a half, 29.53 days is actually the average. Uh, that's if you if you if you take the average throughout the year, that's that's what it averages. So that fluctuation is important to get our 29, 30 day cycles. So I just wanted to share that because I, I didn't hear anybody say anything about the average, and that's uh, that's, that's a great point, brother. I appreciate your following up. That's a great point. I have one other question. What there are a lot of people that go by observation of the crescent. So um, the first day is going to be, or you know, the conjunction. That's that's um, that's the day. That's new moon day. And then when you see that sliver, the next evening, you know, new moon is over. And that was the that was your 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 first day there. <laughs> The conjunction is the new moon, but it's not the new moon day. Um, the new moon day is the day after conjunction, dawn after conjunction. Right, which means you would see that for us in that night. And no. Right, uh-huh. This, this past, um, this, this moon that we're in right now, the conjunction started at one it was like 1.30 in the afternoon, 1.30 p.m. on before sunset. And then our, our day of worship, our new moon day and our Sabbath day was based upon sunset to sunset of, of the following day after that new moon, like the sister just said. So we have a lot of videos of describing the when a day begins or when new moon day is, but um, I want uh, uh, Jonathan, would you just do a closing couple minutes here and then uh, our closing song is the Aaronic Blessing and that's the prayer and the song. 
So you yeah. just want me to talk about this this um, 29 and 30 day month and how it's oscillating? Yeah. So if you look at the top of the 29th uh, day month, we go from from new moon, and then day one is is you know that evening we will see that sliver. We know that new moon is over. But if you go on down to the bottom, you're going to see something really interesting here. As it goes out and it's waning on the 28th day, and it's a really small sliver there. Now we got a, and, and that'll kind of be a key to you when this happens, when there's a goes, when there's a two day new moon. Okay, so if you notice there from going from one, um, one to to another, it's it's showing basically two days of darkness right there. That's a two day new moon, what's called a two day new moon. So if we didn't see the moon that first day, and then we look at it the next night, we don't see it. We absolutely know that, that next day is the first day. Okay, and that'll happen sometimes where you don't see the moon for two days. But then that, that next day, you will see that sliver. No doubt about it. It will never be more than that. But the next month, it may just be one night that you don't see the moon. Okay, so there's definitely an oscillation that goes back. And what's really important about this, and this is what, what it says in Jubilees and how it's mistranslated or misunderstood what it said. If you don't observe the new moons correctly or, or observe the moon correctly, you'll accumulate days. You'll end up with 10 days uh, at the end of the year, up to 10 days. And this is why, because, you know, you can, it's either one or two days. Sometimes it's two. And if you don't observe that observation, which is new moon, you will accumulate that one or two days every month in your count. And that's a, that's a seven day continuous count. Okay. Now, even when you do that, if you did a seven day continuous count, and didn't observe the new moon, every seven years, you'll land up on it anyway. You, you know, your, your piece will start to fit. But that's, that's what happens when you don't observe the moon. It's inconsistent. It's, it floats all over the place. It's the same on your Lewis calendar every, every month. Does anyone know of a scripture where it talks about, uh, in the Bible, that, that there is two days for a new moon? Is there a scripture reference for that? No, there's not, and um, and so, but but it's it is a fact. It's something that that oh yeah, actually there is, there is. I'm, I take that back. I misspoke. This is when uh, Jonathan is going to, to a feast with to, with Saul, mm -hmm. and you see that there was a two day new moon. Yeah. Almost mis misspoke there. I apologize. Well, the reason we know there was a two day new moon because there's um, six. Six working days and a Sabbath, so we have four complete weeks, and four times seven is 28. There's two days left. So we know that there is a day 30 where we're going to do transition, and then day one is new moon day. And we're going to play the Aaron at Blessing here, and we'll be back next week on the conference call. So um, I can find my picture. So thank you, guys.